because there's nothing you can do until it's time to do it. You can't cross the bridge until you get to it. Don't try to do it until you're doing it, right? There's, there's nothing to do right now. There's nothing to do but ex to expose what's going on. There's nothing to do right now but to talk about it, right? And my words may fall on the ears of some man out there who's the man of action. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot, I would like to know if you think we'll have to rebel against the establishment at some point. This pandemic has shown how the majority of people are sheep and followers and how a certain minority is defiant but inactive and satisfied with fighting back using Twitter hashtags or likes on a YouTube video. I feel like we should rebel as men because that's our role in these times where our leaders are turning into tyrants and sacrificing us in the name of their ideology. But I'm wondering if this thought comes from an emotion of hopelessness, doubt and uncertainty, which we are all probably feeling these days. And if there weren't healthier ways of releasing these emotions, things seem to be okay in the US right now, but I live in Western Europe and we're being crushed by politics and the media, which are bullying us into submission. So here's my question, as a man, how do we find the balance between creating the world we want and adapting to the world we live in, which is mostly what we have always done up until this point? It's what men are built to do. It seems like we're building a new world around this COVID religion and most people seem to be okay with it, but the men we aspire to should probably never let these things happen. So what should we do? Do we work on ourselves to get things strong enough and to endure, uh, to get strong enough and endure this? Make money, build a family, buy land away from everything and watch the world burn from afar? Or do we sacrifice ourselves for what's right or maybe both? So it's funny that you asked this question because I was just having a conversation with a young man uh, just yesterday. It's funny that you asked this question because I was just having a conversation with a young man yesterday about this and he was talking about the fourth turning. And so someone brought this up, I think, in one of our conversations recently, but basically it is sort of a... Um, uh, an archetype, which is a pattern. Patterns are, archetypes are patterns that we seem consistently to, 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 to notice in the evolution of generations, right? And so we're very familiar with the one that uh, goes, hard times create strong men, strong men create good times, good times create weak men, weak men create hard times, right? That there's, there's four, there's four associated with that pattern. And it's a legitimate pattern, even that one that I'm describing right now. But when watching a few videos about the fourth turning, I found it interesting that a lot of, uh, a lot of people interpret it in the way that we speak as it relates to masculine archetypes, right? That there are four types of men. There are four types of men and there are four stages that we go through until we get to the end of a, end of a, an era, an end of a season, a turning, right? And so uh, while we were speaking of this conversation, it came to my mind that a lot of what's going on in the world right now uh, and what's required of men can be seen in how the American Revolution, the first American Revolution unfolded. And there were definitely three types of men, right? So we're gonna focus on the number three for a moment because I think the fourth is uh, somewhere later to come. Uh, according to, um, I forget the name of the author, but he was a, uh, a historian. And he wrote a really good book. Boy, my memory is fading me today. Uh, Eric Hoffer. Eric Hoffer is the author uh, of a book about mass movements, right? I think it's called True Believer. True Believer, a book about mass movements. And so you're talking about rebellion and mass movements. And Eric Hoffer suggests that there are three types of men that, requ that are required for, a, for an ev a revolution of sorts to take place. You have the man of words. You have the man of action. And you have the man of pragmatic action. And I think the fourth of those would be the, the, the man of luxury, the man that, that uh, basks in the glory and receives all the benefit of the men of words, the men of action, the men of pragmatic action, right? So we'll talk about those three. Those are the three I wanna focus on because I think we're at the point right now where we are still as you know revolutionaries as you might consider it, you know, I'm not really considering it that, but I'm using it as an, as an example. We, I think, are still in the realm of the man of words. 
I think because of the proliferation, right, the explosion of the internet, we have access to more information, more ideas, and we can spread more ideals than ever before. And so I know you kind of denigrate hashtags and YouTube videos, but a movement can't can't take hold if people aren't aware of what's going on, if people aren't aware of what needs to be moved. So during the American Revolution, we had a man named Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine wrote a book called Common Sense. Common Sense was a book that was written and he had to have a printing press. Let me check, let me explain to you the difference between the American Revolution, the first American Revolution, and the revolution that we're probably, uh, is unfolding as we speak. Uh, he, had, he wrote this book, right? And that back then they would like dip feathers in, in ink. And he had to pen this book called, called Common Sense. And then he had to get like a, I don't know how they did it, but they would, they would print, right? They would, they would have somebody doing this, printing the books, folding the books, putting together, and then they had to get on horseback and they had to gallop around the colonies and they had to spread this book, right? Right now I can make YouTube videos, right? But it's the same concept. Thomas Paine was a hero because his words, when they got into the hands of the, col uh, the colonists, right, the, col the colonies, um, most people couldn't even read back then. And so you would have like a town reader, a town crier, right? And everybody would gather around and he'd read the book and the people are listening. They're like, wow, yeah, no taxation without representation, right? They heard all these things that are associated with the tyranny that they were under based on, you know, the, the world ruler of the time, right? And so you ha he was the man of words. Us making YouTube videos, us with the hashtags, right, on Twitter, guys who are writing blogs, we are like the Thomas Paines of this time. You know, Thomas Paine was one man and he went down in history because it was, because information was difficult to come by at that time. Most people couldn't read. Uh, there were no, there was, there was no, there, there was no postal service. There damn sure was no email and there was no YouTube videos. So you had to have one guy smart enough, wealthy enough, and well-connected enough to put his words on paper and disseminate it through the colonies. Right now, as long as you're not banned off YouTube, you can have an audience of several thousand, hundred thousand, millions of people, right? Like we do now. So it's good that you have that because these are the people that stoke the fire or, or better yet, start the fire, right? These are the sparks. These are the people that get the thing going with their words, the men of words. And Simone Bolivar, right? I don't know if I'm saying the name right, but I think that's who it is. And I'm not a big fan of a lot of these revolutions, just by the way, I'm just describing them as they are and where we are and what we might have to do. Um, he said that the pen is more mighty than a sword. The pen is mightier than a sword, right? Right? So you, you had the time of Thomas Paine, time of words. It's important that you have the man of words. He sets the stage for what? The man of action. The man of action in this context is George Washington. George Washington literally picked up the bayonets, put together the, the infantry and the, 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 the rebel soldiers that fought against the empire at the time. They were, these men were farmers. They had picks. They would go and fight with sticks. A lot of them didn't even have rifles, right? I mean, the rifles that they had were like just to protect their flocks from wolves. These were men that were very salt of the earth, down to earth, with their families. They go to church and they farm their land, guys. And they realized that there was a particular point that they had that a, a threshold that had been passed and that they were required to step up and take action. Now, even then, even still, and I'm using the American Revolution as an example just so you can see what we are right now, only 3%, only 3% of the American population supported the war. Only 3% got involved with the war in some way, shape, or form. 3% changed the course of history for 97%. So here we got another thing that I need you to consider. That I know you have this sense that you want to get up and you want to take action. And first of all, it's just not time for action yet. It's just not time for action yet, right? Because we don't need to be, we don't have the privilege, we don't have the luxury of being the aggressors. We have to defend ourselves. We're defenders. We're not aggressors. We don't need to be aggressors. There's no point to be aggressors. We have what we want. We have what we need, but it's being taken away. So we're in a defensive position. Always remember that we're in a defensive position. And when you're in a defensive position, there's no offensive attack. We're never on the offensive. 
there's no reason to be on the offensive. And if we're on the offensive, we're much more easily uh, denigrated or or, or uh, canceled, right? Like you can't, when you are being an offender, they can point it out. But when you're being a defender, they have to make up stories. In this instance, and in the instance of the revolution, they were and we are defenders. That means we, sit, we, we have to. That's what defenders do. You sit back and you wait. You sit back and you wait. You don't move forward. You're always in a defensive position, right? Mm-hmm. There's great value to that. Don't take that as a position of weakness. In many instances, i.e. the revolution, it's a position of strength, right? There was a, there was, there was a tremendous amount of strength for them to be able to maneuver in that guerrilla warfare style and pick off their enemies, right? So we had George Washington. He was the man of action, right? And you need those guys. And maybe, maybe you're one of those guys. Maybe you're one of those guys because I'm convinced that we're going to see kinetic warfare. We're going to see land invasion at some point, probably in my lifetime here in the U.S. And you guys in Europe have already been invaded, but it's just going to get worse. It's just going to get worse, uh, open borders and uh, and deals with China and what's going on with Russia and the collapse of our uh, the economy and the currency. I mean, these are all things. The pandemic itself was the opening salvo of World War Three. Understand that we are already in a war. We are in the defensive already in this regard that the oligarchs have allowed the 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 what we now know man-made Wuhan lab uh, coronavirus to begin to soften the states, begin to soften the people, begin to put people into a frenzy of chaos, right? That's where we are right now. Because as you make people more afraid and more frenzied and there's more chaos, we're more easily manipulated and much more easily taken down, right? So you have the man of action, right? And that's the man, when it's time to pick up those rifles, he picks them up and he does what he has to do in a defensive way, not to lose what he has worked so hard to gain, right? And who knows that, what that is for you and me, right? And sometimes there's a guy that has nothing to lose that works even harder. So we may see that. I don't think the time is here yet. I know you're itching. Maybe it's in your soul. Maybe that's why you're here. Maybe you will be a George Washington type. I don't know. I know I'm a Thomas Paine. I've come to grips with that. I am a little bit older and I have a platform. People listen to me. I'm Thomas Paine. I speak words of revolution. I speak word. I put sparks out there. I light the fire in people's minds. That's what I do. I'm a disseminator of the idea, right? Just like Thomas Paine. But your generation, right? So we're talking about the fourth turning now. Your generation, I believe, is, is uh, and as the young man I was speaking to yesterday asserts, because he's a, he's a Gen Zer also, you know, sort of towards the end, uh, will be the warrior class. You will be the George Washington class or, 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 uh, or generation. You'll be the George Washington generation. And it ends there and starts all over again. But what needs to happen is a new order is established, and that's where you get men of pragmatic action. That's what Thomas Jefferson is. Thomas Jefferson was a man of pragmatic action. So he, didn't, he wasn't necessarily the guy that picked up the guns and led the troops. He was the guy that wrote the, the new bylaws, right? The Constitution, right? The brand new Constitution. He was heavily involved with that. And of course, there were many others, but I'm just giving you this example that there are those three types of men, three types of three types of strong men. Right. And so I don't know, you know, I'm kind of like talking, I'm blending a couple ideas together here. I think it would be good to look into this idea of the fourth turning. Right. There's some just look it up on YouTube fourth turning. So you have an idea of where we are in time and how things are evolving. Um, but then also having a good understanding of, of the three types of men that are required for a revolution to happen and understand you got to be practical, right? Because I know you're itching and you're right. You are being emotion. You're definitely being emotional, right? With your emotional state, start creating content, right? Like there's like you, you I know you're, you're kind of a little down on the hashtags and the videos, but bro, th- how did you come to know what you know in order to have the sentiment that you're proceeding from? because of men of words. We're still in the phase of the men of words. And you know how you know that we're in the, in the phase of the men of words? Because the attack, where's the attack coming right now? The greatest attack is on our tongue. You can't say that 
you shouldn't say that. You're not allowed to say that. I can't believe you said that. Do you know what he said? So we live in a world where the attack will happen first verbally, verbal attack. It's, ta it's attacking the first amendment, right? Check this out, just how cool this is. If you follow my lead, we are at the first stages of this so-called war when they attack the first amendment, when they attack your ability to speak out, to speak up and to say what we want to say. And unlike wars of previous eras where the, you know, the, 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 the enemy had to like bug your phone. They had to bug your phone or they had to bug your house, right? They would wire your house, right? While you're sleeping at night or when you're left, like somebody would sneak in and they would put wires in your house so they could listen to you talk, right? Uh, not so any longer. They listen to us all over, listen to everybody, listen to everything I'm saying right now. And they got algorithms and spiders crawling our conversations and paying attention to everything that we're doing. And that's why they're so defiant against our defiance. They want us shut the fuck up. Right. And they can point out who the troublemakers, who the rabble rousers so they can be canceled. The attack then and watch this with Joe Biden as our puppet president. The next step is against the people's ability to defend themselves. So the man of words are us that are being canceled. The men of action are the men who, at least in the U.S., because we are the last bastion of hope. We are the last hope for the planet. America is the last hope. Why? Because unlike other countries, the American people are their militia. The, Ameri the only reason why there has not been a land invasion, a land attack on American soil is because the American people are the largest standing militia on the planet. We are armed to the teeth as a people. So what you're going to see is now the man of action is being attacked because guaranteed, guaranteed that within the next few weeks, few months, or definitely within the first year of Joe Biden's uh uh, uh, presidency, we're going to see an uptick in uh, violent gun crimes, right? They do this all the time, but now they're coming to the point where they, you know, they, they really want to initiate this next phase of the fight. And so they have to come for our weapons. And the way they're going to do it is by through staged false flag events. Right. You know what that means? A false flag event is a fake event, something that they created. And it's not a new thing. It's been going on forever where they create a problem so that there can be a reaction and then the solution. So they're going to create a problem They're going to create a problem by either having some uh, MK ultra mind zombie grab some guns and shoot up some people uh, or they're, they're just straight up higher actors and there's going to be some mass shootings. Right. And then everybody's going to, then the, the president's going to stand up and he's going to be a hero and he's going to say, I have the solution. We need to take away all the Americans' weapons. We're going to take away all their guns away, right? Or, or make it very difficult for them. Disarm the people. That way there's, they're, we're unarmed and vulnerable to a kinetic attack. And so you see that the, 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 as, the man of action, as the man of word steps up, he shut down as the man of action begins to step or even before he steps up he shut down look at what they're doing to the military they're kick, they're in the u.s they're purging the military of all patriots right and what are they doing they're making special airplanes for pregnant women and they and and the military is going lgbt rainbow on us right make the military weak so they're making the military weak they're making the george washington's of our era weak right they're trying their best to and as far as the men of pragmatic action i, I mean i'm not even sure I, I'm not even sure what that would look like. I'm not even sure we're there yet, but you can see the attacks on number, no, on the, on number one and number two. So you, your, your question is, right, your legitimate question here is, uh, do we work on ourselves to get strong enough to endure all this, make money, build a family, buy land away from everything and watch it burn, or do we sacrifice ourselves for what's right or maybe both? It's going to be both. It's going to be both because there's nothing you can do until it's time to do it. You can't cross the bridge until you get to it. Don't try to do it until you're doing it, right? There's, there's nothing to do right now. There's nothing to do it but ex to expose what's going on. There's nothing to do right now but to talk about it, right? And my words may fall on the ears of some man out there who's the man of action, right? 
Your words may fall on, maybe it's you, right? But when that time comes, it's going to be obvious. When that time comes, it's going to be in defense. When that time comes, you will be ready, you will be prepared. But until then, chop wood, carry water. Chop wood, carry water. Take care of your family, make money, buy land. Keep living your life. But when the shit hits the fan, that's when you pull out the towel. That's when you start cleaning shit up. Right? You can't force it. Do not force it. Do not be like one of these guys that they love using these people who are angry, emotional people. They like to use them to make examples of them, right? And they be like, look at this crazy white dude. It's always a white guy. Look at this crazy white dude with guns who, who believes that, you know, in all of these conspiracy theories, right? And you don't want that to be you, <laughs> You don't want that to be you. You could talk. You could talk all you want. Right? Well, the worst they can do is cancel you, and they can try to blame you for the actions of others. But the bottom line is, we are we are in enemy occupied territory because our government is owned by the CCP. You can't even talk about the CCP on YouTube anymore. I, this video might get blocked because I'm talking about it. CCP, Communist Chinese Communist Party, right? Our leaders are owned by them, and China wants our land. Why does China, China want a land invasion? If you look at what's going on in China right now, they're having a massive food shortage, massive food shortage globally with China, and they have a large growing population. They need our land. They need America's land in order to grow their crops because they can't do it any longer. They can't support their population. And so it only makes sense, right, because all empires fall. Right? As soon as you're on top, somebody wants to take you down. America's been on top long enough, and America's fat, lazy, nasty, undeserving at this point, in my, in my opinion, and somebody stronger, somebody smarter, somebody hungrier is going to want to come and take it. In the meantime, you and me, we got our families to take care of. We got our lives to preserve. We got a future to consider. And so when our back is against the wall, just like a raccoon, right, you say when you put a raccoon or a dog between a rock and a hard place, that's when they have no choice but to fight back. You put a raccoon up against a wall in an alley somewhere, you know, he might be running, 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 but as soon as he turns around and he sees that there's a wall there and it's you and the wall, his teeth come out. Your teeth don't need to come out until you have that back against the wall, right? When you see it coming down the road, right? All the time before that, prepare, be aware. Now, you don't have to be paranoid but be aware, pay attention. I feel sorry for you suckers in Europe because you have no Second Amendment, right? You're not, there's nothing you could do to defend yourself, right? And Joe Biden's so dumb, he's talking about how if we, if we think we're going to defend ourselves against nuclear bombs from the, from the government, right? He said that we better have nuclear bombs if we want to protect ourselves against the tyranny of our government. He is living on Mars. He's, he's, he's checked out. His brain is checked out. Because if troops are on the street and the men have, are armed, those are men who are troops on the street too. And they probably want to go home to their families. And if they know they're creeping up on some rural place in the U.S., where these rednecks are living up in trees for three days at a time so they can shoot a fucking pig, guaranteed they're going to be sitting up there picking off commies, right? Like they do turkeys and boars. So that's where I'm at with that, bro. There really is nothing to do right now but to be aware and to speak up. When your back's against the wall, bite back. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.